Dan Larson here at the Photo Booth with some recent acquisitions and a bunch of stuff sent into the P.O. Box by viewers like you. Uh, up first, we've got the Star Wars 6-inch Black Series Shadow Trooper from The Force Unleashed. Uh, I believe this is a GameStop exclusive. That's where I got mine. Uh, Pre-ordered it about a month ago. Showed up uh, a couple days ago. Uh, it's uh, it's an awesome figure. I mean, if you have a Stormtrooper, you already know what, uh, what the figure is. This is the exact same thing, just molded and painted a bit different. Um, I don't know if this whole thing is uh, molded in the translucent plastic. I only got one, so I'm not going to be the one that experiments with it and tries to scrape off all the paint. But if one of you guys out there who bought more than one, uh, if you could do that for me, just let me know if this whole thing is translucent. Because if it is, then I'm definitely going to have to order another one and just scrape all the paint off this thing to see what it looks like. Uh, just to have you know, a completely clear, bluish, translucent version of this thing. But it's got all the same pros and cons of the regular Stormtrooper figures. Obviously, you know, articulation is limited a little bit by some of these boxes and stuff. Uh, and, uh, you know, other than that, he's really great and it looks awesome. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the new, new Stormtrooper mold. This kind of feels like, you know, sending it out with uh, a really, really nice sort of bon voyage on such a cool character design. But uh, I, uh, I definitely have one of the new ones pre-ordered as well, so we'll see how that stacks up. But this is just a really, really great figure. Uh, pretty excited to have that piece uh, and would love to see them uh, explore Translucence more than just a Stormtrooper and Darth Vader's skull head. Uh, next recent acquisition is Earthrise Starscream. I wasn't sure if I was going to get this one. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a Transformer completist by any stretch of the imagination. I pick and choose specific characters if there's a particular mold that jumps out at me and, you know, is just a can't, a can't miss, must have. Um, obviously, I'm partial to Jets. I have the Generations versions of all the Seekers, uh, including the Coneheads, which I've never really been a big fan of because of the Conehead. It's just a, an aesthetic thing that never really appealed to me. Uh, I passed on Siege Starscream, didn't really care for the Tetra Jet. You know, if they'd have really just said, you know, we're, we're just going to make it look like a, a Colonial Viper from Battlestar Galactica, I probably would have bought it. But it was just kind of sort of teasing around the edges to, to kind of look like that. And I was like, nah, it's not enough. Plus, I figured they'd probably be going back to the regular version of the, the alt mode at some point. So I waited and it paid off. Uh, they got me on the multiple Optimus Primes, so... Don't worry about Hasbro, they're getting their money. But I gotta say, this thing is really, really great. I, you know, as a Voyager class, you know, the price point's a little higher than I really would care to pay, uh, but the engineering on this thing is really fantastic. It, you know, short of no waste and no opening cockpit and no wheels in jet mode, but the jet mode is really, really sharp. I'm not gonna transform it right now because it would just add like, you know, another three or four minutes to this video. Uh, while I tried to to put it together, but uh, it's a great, it's it's a really great modern update to Starscream. Uh, if you're looking to upgrade from generations, if you haven't picked up a Starscream in a while, I could definitely recommend it to you. Um, Poseable enough, and it's just some really clever engineering things that uh, haven't uh, haven't seen on this figure before, and, and probably because I don't really collect third party stuff, so you know whatever. But I'm digging it, and I'll probably. Ugh, Probably going to have to get at least the two-pack with Skywarp and Thundercracker in it. But I'm not I'm not going in for the Coneheads, he said. Famous last words. All right, first piece of mail comes with an apology from me. Uh, you know, people asked a couple of months ago, people asked if, uh, if it was okay to still send mail. You know, we had uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 going around. And thankfully, people were nice enough to, to reach out and say, hey, is, are you guys still accepting mail? Is it still okay to send stuff in? And, you know, I said yes, but hadn't really considered what that was going to mean. Uh, were we going to have any sort of extra precautions that we we're going to take as far as opening mail was concerned? Uh, just, you know, boxes showed up. And then I was like, oh, no, I actually have to think about this now. You know, am I, I going to do something different? So in this particular case, I did take all the stuff out of the box put the stuff aside. You know, like I kept the box sort of in a back room where we don't go for a couple of days, took everything out of the box, and then I got rid of the box. However, <laughs> I didn't I didn't keep track of the name of the person who sent this in and I'm positive there was a note and I'm positive that I have that note somewhere and I just don't know where it is. So, unfortunately, 
uh, you know, uh, if it was you, uh, I am super sorry. Please comment down below and let me know if, uh, if that was you so I can properly thank you. Uh, it was very, very thoughtful. The whole thing was very thoughtful, which makes it even worse. Uh, the person who sent this in, you know, there's a Marvel Legends Cosmic Ghost Rider here, the whole box set with uh, the motorcycle and everything. This is going to be real hard to see with uh, the glare in the booth here. Uh, but you've got the motorcycle, which I haven't even taken out of the box. Uh, I did take the figure out of the box, which is an insane piece of plastic uh, delivered by Hasbro. Really, really just putting that character together uh, in an amazing way that, uh, I mean, you can see him right here on the cover. It's same guy, same thing. Uh, and as far as I know, most of these parts are all new. Uh, I haven't really, and I'm not going to check to see if the legs uh, are reused from anywhere. I think it's all brand new. It looks, uh, it looks pretty accurate to the character styling in the book. Flame chain whip, giant super metal shoulder pads, uh, translucent skull in a glass dome. I mean, what is not to love about this thing? It is absolutely insane. Uh, I'm excited that they attempted it. I'm excited that they pulled it off. But in terms of it, getting back to the thoughtfulness of the person who sent this in, they wanted me to know the actual story. Uh, so they sent in the trade paperback of the collected, uh, it's like three or four issues worth of Cosmic Ghost Rider story here. So I would know exactly what was going on. And this, it is absolutely worth it. Uh, I can't remember. I mean, even right here on the on the cover. Wonderfully absurd. Uh, Multiversity Comics, you really, you really nailed that one uh, because that's what it is. It's just a fun ride. Uh, with the character. Uh, for those that don't know, this isn't really a spoiler, but Cosmic Ghost Rider is the Punisher uh, years and years and years and years into the future. After he's uh, become Ghost Rider, he served as the Herald of Galactus, teams up with Thanos. There's all kinds of just crazy action going on. And I, I don't, honestly, I think it's all canon. I don't know for sure. Uh, even if it's not, still just really, really fun. Um, also in this box, aside from Ghost Rider, Cosmic Ghost Rider and Cosmic Ghost Rider book, uh, also included a Super 7 transforming He-Man glow-in-the-dark figure. Uh, this is from their like Filmation, you know, classic 5 POA line. Uh, a figure that was never produced in the original line. It's weird under this light, you can kind of see the difference in the plastics that are being used here. I don't feel like, I don't think it looked like that under just like regular sunlight. It's showing up like that now. It's weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know. Just an incredibly thoughtful batch of stuff. The figure with the bike and the book, and they know that I like glow-in-the-dark stuff. And here I am, uh, totally lost their name. So thank you, mysterious donor whose identity I knew at one point, but neglected to record for posterity. Second package here. Second package. Third package. <laughs> I've lost track of what's going on. Second package, third chapter of this video, whatever. We've got uh, a custom piece here from Toybox Customs. We've got uh, Toybox Customs here. They are Toybox Customs on Instagram. Um, I had uh, Toybox Customs sent me a previous custom Snake Eyes head that uh, one that fit Marvel Legends and one that fit Fuchs's uh, articulated icons. Uh, for that uh, solitaire body so that you could make that uh, secret agent, uh, special operatives, uh, operations guy, um, look like a Snake Eyes figure. This is intended for the new G.I. Joe class, uh, classified series figures. And it fits on either one, whether you've got the uh, mass release, which is this one. Hopefully at some point this will be the mass release. Uh, or the limited edition Hasbro Pulse version. Uh, obviously there are coloration differences here. Uh, this one comes with more silver visor. So this is a more traditional sort of head sculpt, but also with the silver visor on it. So it uh, just gives it a bit more of that classic look. And, uh, you know, especially again, if you weren't able to acquire, and at this point, good luck, it's super expensive. If you weren't able to acquire the special edition version from Hasbro directly. I, I my guess would be they're never going to put out any more uh, product, any more stock on that. So if you want to, I've seen a lot of people swapping parts on these. You know, taking gear off of this, putting this head over here, and sort of making the like ideal Snake Eyes as far as the color uh, versions. Use this Uzi. Use this uh, bandolier with hand grenades on it. 
uh, and then get that silver visor over there. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I really have a preference. Like in, it, in, this, in this particular case, I think I'm cool with the figures as they were issued. Um, I don't wanna get into constantly swapping heads. My, my only real concern with either of these is that I feel like the legs are a little slight. They're a little thin. Maybe just a little bit more going on. I don't know if they're short. I don't know, something's going on there that proportions just aren't quite working for me. And I know that he's got the uh, drop hips, but uh, that's not it. It's also, mine's really like rubbery in the joints, which is really annoying. But uh, it's a really great figure and it's, uh, I'm glad to have this uh, custom piece. So check out Toy Box Customs if you're looking for uh, a more traditional head sculpt. It doesn't have this sort of beard chin strap thing going. Uh, it looks a lot more like the original figure. Uh, but with that, you know, shiny silver visor. So check out Toy Box Customs. Good stuff there. Thank you very much uh, for that piece. Next up is Brian Neighbor sent in a whole box of stuff here. <clears throat> uh, the first thing, and I, I actually, you know, I apologize, I did already open this. Uh, it's the uh, Wonder Woman 84. Let me crank this camera up a little. There we go. That's better. Uh, Wonder Woman 84, and this is the armored version. Uh, haven't seen the movie yet, obviously. <laughs> uh, I know it's been pushed back once or twice here, uh, given the uh, situation with theaters and uh, everybody in quarantine and trying not to spread this disease uh, around by everybody going into a, you know, movie theater and coughing on each other. But this thing is... Uh, I really, really like it. <laughs> like it a lot. You know, it's it really calls back to that Alex Ross Kingdom Come uh, eagle armor that she wore. Uh, I'm excited to see this sort of, you know, effect of whatever these sort of magic armor elements are, because uh, they're, you know, sort of like feathers. Honestly, these are the best Archangel wings that have ever been made. These these look better than uh, the way Arch Archangel's been handled in uh, the X-Men movies uh, themselves. Um, I dig it. Uh, McFarlane's really doing a great job with the DC stuff. This figure is really, really nice. Uh, could, could there have been a little more articulation in the wings? Fine, whatever. I don't care. The gold is shiny. She's got really nice articulation. I, I still think she scales okay with six-inch action figures, uh, and it's just a really nice piece. And I've seen people pairing this up with the Hellbat Batman armor and then the whatever the name is of the Superman armor. And the three of them look really, really good together. <laughs> and I was going to pass on the armored Superman because something about the head on that thing just wasn't working for me, the whole helmet. Uh, and then I saw people posting pictures of the three of them together. And I was like, oh no, I have two and they look great all together. I got to get that third one. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get Superman at some point. It's so dumb. Being a collector is so dumb. The dumbest things make you want to go get something. And I apologize because I know I'm that guy for some of you. Uh, oh, I wasn't going to buy it until Dan showed a picture of it on screen. And now I have to have it. So what are you going to do? You know, it goes around, comes around. Uh, also in here, we've got a 12-inch Marvel Legends Captain America, which uh, I saw these. You know, I saw them in public, in public, on the store shelves. And, you know, I wasn't... I wasn't looking to get into 12 inch figures like this. You know, it's like I have a couple of hot toys and that's fine, but I wasn't really looking, especially this particular uh, costume design, like these shoulder pads are weird. And it was just a bit, I don't know, just something about this design. If it had been a little bit more traditional cap, you know, maybe I'd go for it. But you know, th this, the way this one looks in particular made it easy for me to say, nah, I'm good. Uh, he also comes with a unhelmeted head his helmet uh, and then uh, this is the other strap for the back of his shield he's also got a peg which I think is in his back right now uh, there's this star I don't even know how, oh there it goes this star pops out uh, so that you can put the shield on his back if you want it's really you know very well articulated uh, I almost grabbed one of these an Iron Man uh, and Thor uh, when they were getting clearance at places like uh, TJ Maxx and uh, some of those other Marshalls, you know, places where those weird clearance figures end up at, Ross, those types of places. It was like 10 bucks, and even at that price, I passed on it. Uh, but this is cool. We're always looking for stuff to throw in the background on the shelves. It's going to like fill up visual space, uh, and Cap will definitely serve that purpose uh, at that size. Uh, also in the box, Brian's letter was very nice. Uh, you know, thanked me and producer Greg and, and even Mrs. Toy Galaxy for, you know, the stuff that we do. So I'm assuming that this was included for Mrs. Toy Galaxy. It's certainly not for producer Greg. Uh, My Little Pony Rainbow Dash Funko Pop. Uh, it is adorable. 
Uh, I don't even know. Eh, that might be one that doesn't even come out of the package. Uh, I also assume that the Wicket Mighty Mugs figure was uh, included for her as well. Um, I don't know how many of you remember Mighty Mugs. I actually preferred Mighty Mugs. Uh, let me let me correct that. There are things about Mighty Mugs that I preferred. I like the sculpting on Funko Pops. There's a lot more detail, a lot more interesting positions. You know, here you just get all the same pose. Uh, I just thought these had more character in the eyes and the face in the facial expressions. Um, so I do still have some Mighty Mugs, and I do still dig that line. Also got in here a uh, Classics Grimlock, uh, a figure that it's, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, it's Grimlock. It, it's, a, it's a gold and silver dinosaur. Uh, it's an interesting update to that classic figure, which that whole line was about. Um, it feels like the character. Uh, it bugs me that his transformation, and again, I'm not going to do it right now because I don't know this transformation well enough to do it in an economically efficient, you know, time efficient manner. Uh, it bugs me that his head becomes the feet, right? So that his head splits apart and then the feet, you know, are basically his open mouth. Uh, you know, he's standing on his open mouth as his feet and, oh God, I just, I don't like the look of that. It's like, if you're going to be a dinosaur transformer, this is the rule, what the rule should be. If you're a dinosaur transformer, especially like a T-Rex, a Velociraptor, something like that, the head either should flip back or it's your hand or it's your chest. Those are the only three options, not feet, not, not nothing else, just head, flip back or, or hand, you know, hand like, uh, like T-Rex Megatron. Uh, also in here, we've got a couple other bits. We've got this tiny Superman from uh, the J Justice League animated series or from uh, Superman animated series. He's like die cast, got some heft to it. We've also got an an animated, a translucent hologram. Uh, I think this is episode three, Obi-Wan. It's, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're a cosplayer, that'll work. Put him on a little uh, hockey puck. You have your little hologram generator. And then this is a, um, I don't know, it's like a remote control... R5 unit that uh, doesn't have any batteries in it or anything. So, I don't know. I assume this is my collar. I know it's a lightsaber, but this would be like a droid collar. Make him uh, roll forward, I assume. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least in this box. You know, we just posted the Boba Fett 500 video. Uh, this is going to be Boba Fett 501. The reality is that I've actually got <laughs> several... Uh, Boba Fett's that you very generous folks have sent in for the Boba set that have not been accounted for yet. They have not been assigned a number because I really, really, really wanted to get that 500 video out. And uh, I didn't want to assign anything else a number until that was done because I didn't want to get too far ahead and then be at a point where it was just like, oh, we're just not going to do a 500 video. And I really, really wanted to do that 500 video. So now that that's out, I can start actually logging some of these. So this is 501 and oh man, I, you can see it here. Like, what a great figure. Look at that hole in his neck. You can see the peg from his head. Uh, really, really digging that. That is a that is a break. That is a wear spot that I have not seen on any of the other figures uh, in the Boba set. So that is truly a unique piece. Uh, and thank you very much to Brian for sending all of this stuff in. All right, last box here is from Lawrence. And the box is so big, so big. Lawrence, frequent contributor to Toy Galaxy, uh, Dan in the photo booth here. This box is so big, I can't, I'm not even going to put it in the booth because you're just not going to be able to see anything. Uh, I may actually have to adjust the camera at a certain point here, but to start off, we're just going to go with what we can actually see in the frame. So we've got some magazines here. We've got uh, this copy of Hobby Japan with an absolutely gorgeous Gundam just right through the heart of that Zack. <laughs> just, just skewering him. Uh, I, man, I, I love this magazine so much. I wish I could get, I don't know, maybe you can. I've never even actually looked into to see if you can get a subscription to this kind of thing in the US. Uh, or if, you know, like people just like post them on eBay or something. But I used to pick this magazine up all the time at the comic shops uh, that I used to frequent back in the day just to be able to see, like, this was the only place you could see all this stuff that was happening in Japan, model kits, and, you know, just all the different pop culture stuff that was going on there, uh, pre-internet, <laughs> and now you can just log on anywhere and see all this stuff uh, all the time, but uh, I really, really, really dig seeing these magazines and, and being able to check this stuff out and see what's going on. 
Uh, I still like, you know, holding stuff in my hands. I still like looking through, you know, physical print, you know, publications. I, I know that makes me a dinosaur, but you know, whatever it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, I also wish I could read Japanese so I could actually get full value out of these things. But uh, very cool couple of uh, magazines there. And then we've also got a Robot Spirits, keeping with the Gundam uh, theme for now, a Robot Spirits Gaian, uh, one of the bad guys. He's got the pointy spearhead, a projectile launching shield, and then a uh, lightsaber laser sword. Um, I love this line and, you know, I'm really hoping that, I'm really hoping that Gundam Universe uh, starts cranking out some figures a little faster here because I'm trying not to fall down the rabbit hole. There's so many figures out and they're so expensive, especially if I want to catch up. They've been out for so many years at this point that, you know, playing catch up would just be so, so expensive and I just can't go there. So if Gundam Universe can keep rolling out, uh, that'll, uh, that'll take care of that. Uh, also in here... This is ridiculous. So I know about Common Rider. I know a little bit about Common Rider. I don't know a lot about Common Rider. <laughs> and I certainly don't know anything about Common Rider in the last decade. That's not a joke. But uh, I haven't actually seen an episode. I don't know. I see like, you know, people posting short videos here and there, you know, animated GIFs, whatever but I do not really know that much about where the storyline goes. I don't even know if these four figures are the same character or four different characters, honestly. We've got Kamen Rider, I believe, and Lawrence specifically said in his letter that uh, I, I would have said Forza or Forza. Uh, he said he's pretty sure it was pronounced uh, 4Z, so I'll go with 4Z for now. If that's wrong, take it out on Lawrence. Uh, but uh, this is <laughs> Magnet States. This is Cosmic States, this is Elect States, and this is Fire States. So, again, I don't know if it's the same character that just has different... You know, they're all about the sort of belt attachment plugins and how those powers change what the character can do and the abilities and the attachments and whatever. So that's just my observ <laughs> observational assumptions that I'm making based on pictures and stuff that I've seen and stuff that people post on Instagram. So, again, I don't know if this is all the same guy or if this is, you know, different uh, characters and they're all on a team together. I don't know. But we've also got the Common Rider 4Z Machine Massegler. I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, you you tell me. I'm sure somebody. You know what? Don't don't even bother telling me. I'll I'll know before uh, before this video even gets posted. I'll just look it up myself and see somebody else saying it. Uh, but so this is the motorcycle. It looks like a space shuttle. It's really cool. <laughs> like it looks like this. You know, sp space shuttle Voyager or Enterprise, whatever. Um, but this guy is not one of these guys. These are, this is a different look. This one seems closest, but it's not this guy. So I'm not sure if that's a different guy. So this is already like, I mean, everything that's here, this is already like incredibly generous and just, I mean, a lot of stuff for me to learn about. Uh, but Lawrence, Man, just went one step further, and this is so big I can't even put it in the booth. Like that's as far back as my booth goes. Let me turn it up here. So this is the I can't read any of this, but this is like a crazy deluxe box set. <laughs> uh, it says Common Rider 4Z uh, base states and module complete set. Is this a thing? Like, is this a thing that they do for characters like this, where they have? so many accessories and so much going on with this stuff that you got to put it in a box this size. This thing is like two feet tall and like, I don't know, like 15 inches across and just like 30 accessories in here. And I, th oh, this is the guy that's, uh, yeah, this is the guy that's on the motorcycle here. So I think if not, it's pretty dark. No, yeah, that's him. So yeah, again, I don't know. Is that, is that the same guy as these? Or is that a different guy? Uh, I'll find out. And so, you know, I don't have a lot of common Rider stuff in my collection until today. Thank you, Lawrence. <laughs> now I've got all this common Rider stuff and it gives me a reason to go out and take a look and figure out what all this is and learn what this is. Now, I am smart enough. I've been, I'm no toy industry expert necessarily as far as manufacturing is concerned, uh, but I get the marketing, right? I've been a victim of it for so long <laughs> that, you know, hey, let's make them buy a bunch of accessories. And they're like, here's a bunch of accessories. So, you know, nice job, Bandai. You, you know you know how this game works and you knew 
that uh, you'd be able to do this and, and get away with it. And uh, yeah, like, I don't know, is there another series that does this? I feel bad if you're a common Rider fan and this is like, you gotta buy a thing like this every year, this is insane. Anyway, I'm gonna have a lot of fun taking a look at it, checking all this stuff out, finding out what all this is. Probably gonna be looking for episodes online, seeing if I can find some clips or whatever, seeing how all this stuff works and who all these people are. Um, I can't guarantee that we're gonna do a history of common Rider. I can guarantee that it's on our list and it's been on our list for a really long time. So, you know, probably at some point. But man, what a what a crazy thing. So thank you, Lawrence, for all of that stuff. Thank you to the mysterious donor whose name I lost. Thank you to Toybox Customs. Brian, again, thank you, Lawrence. And thank you for watching this and all of our videos. Follow me on Instagram at ToyGalaxy. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash ToyGalaxy or become a channel member at youtube.com slash ToyGalaxyTV slash join. Thanks. Later.